Hi everybody, Kev McNamara here. Welcome to the Inspired Healing Podcast. This is a podcast for those of you looking to change your lives, get out of your comfort zones and reach your full potential. I talk about the Stoics and the Stoic stories and quotes from people like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus. I explain how they relate to your life today and how they can help you change your life for the better. It's kind of the five minute Stoic for personal development. And please support our sponsors, Prostate Plus, if you're a man and you want to shrink your prostate, Prostate Plus are the best supplements you can get. I use them myself to keep my prostate fit and healthy. And milfan.com, the world's best food delivery service. Links are in the show notes below. Now let's go inside. Hi everybody, Kev here. Welcome to the Inspired Healing Podcast. Great to have you here. Today I want to talk to you about Theodore Roosevelt. And this time it's not a quote as such, but it is in fact a story about how he got into a bar fight and this is in 1884 and this is just such a great story um, this was well before he was the president he was president in 1901 and this is back in 1884 so he was uh, around about 26 years old and uh, the story goes a little bit like this he once found himself in a bar fight in Mingusville, Montana which apparently is now Wybox. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, W-I-B-A-U-X. Wybo, Wybox in Montana, around the summer of 1884. He never actually specified the exact date of the incident in his autobiography, but at that time he was still relatively unknown in the area. Now he'd been riding for his own enjoyment, through the badlands and the prairies of Western Dakota Territory and Eastern Montana Territory. Can you imagine that back in the 1880s, just riding on a horse through the badlands and the prairies of Dakota and Montana? It would have been just, wow, just to be there at that time. So he'd been riding his horse for many days around there when he arrived at the Nolans Hotel in Mingusville. And there he came across a bully who, like others had done, who did not know Roosevelt well, teased him about his glasses. Roosevelt described the incident in his own words in his autobiography, and I quote, It was late in the evening when I reached the place. I heard one or two shots in the bar room as I came up, and I disliked going in. But there was nowhere else to go, and it was a cold night. Inside the room were several men, who, including the bartender, were wearing the kind of smile worn by men who were making believe to like what they don't like. A shabby individual in a broad hat with a cocked gun in each hand was walking up and down the floor, talking with strident profanity. He had evidently been shooting at the clock, which had two or three holes in its face. As soon as he saw me, he hailed me as four eyes in reference to my spectacles. And he said, Four Eyes is going to treat. I joined in the laugh and got behind the stove and sat down, thinking to escape notice. He followed me, however, and though I tried to pass it off as a jest, this merely made him more offensive. And he stood leaning over me, a gun in each hand, using very foul language. In response to his reiterated command that I should set up the drinks, I said, well, if I've got to, I've got to, and rose, looking past him. As I rose, I struck quick and hard with my right, just to one side of the point of his jaw, hitting with my left as I straightened out, and then again with my right. He fired the guns, but I did not know whether this was merely a convulsive action of his hands, or whether he was trying to shoot at me. When he went down, he struck the corner of the bar with his head. If he had have moved, I was about to drop on my knees, but he was senseless. I took away his guns, and the other people in the room, who were now loud in their denouncement of him, hustled him out and put him in the shed. Wow. Unquote. And by the next morning, the bully had left town on a freight train. Before he came to Dakota, Roosevelt was actually a successful boxer at Harvard, and he maintained an interest in various martial arts throughout his life, including judo, kendo, jiu-jitsu, boxing and wrestling, practicing many of them at the White House. So now you can probably see why he got the nickname The Cowboy. 
And when we look back on these times, I just I just love reading about this kind of stuff because this is the sort of thing that you look back on this person's life and think, wow, this is a life that he led. You know, over a hundred years ago, this is what life was like. And we when we go back and we read these autobiographies of people from, you know, sometimes hundreds of years ago, we get a real glimpse into what life was like, and it's such a good thing to do. And I haven't as yet read his autobiography, but believe me, after finding this little story, I'm definitely going to do that. He is just such a just someone that I really resonate with. I just love the fact that he's was just a real knockabout sort of a guy. And here he is going into a bar with a guy with two guns cocked, ready to shoot anybody. Just amazing. And he's just knocked the guy out. Brilliant. And there are so many stories like that from so many years ago. And we can learn from these things and we can just see what life was like back then and what people had to put up with. And we whinge and complain today when the internet's not working or we lose our mobile phone. You know, just petty rubbish that we put up with today. And you think of what life was like back then and how hard people were. And David Goggins is definitely right. People are so soft these days. It is easy to be great because people are so soft. I hope you enjoyed that story. I'm going to start finding a few more stories of people like that. Um, I'll try and find some more Teddy Roosevelt stories because they're just amazing. And uh, I'll bring those to you on the podcast. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Well, I really hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you did, please subscribe and leave a review. That really does help us. And also share it with your family and friends. That would be great. And please support my sponsor, Prostate Plus. Prostate Plus supplements really can help shrink your prostate. I use them myself to great effect. The links to Prostate Plus are down below in the show notes. Thanks for listening. See you next time.